Hey everyone, today I'm going to review the Apple M1 Mac Mini which was released in 2020. My review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, digital art, I also edit photos and videos. This review may be a bit long so if you want to save time you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. Right, just to give you some background, I recently upgraded from the Intel Mac Mini which was released in 2018 to the M1 Mac Mini. So this Intel version that I have here has the Intel i7 6 core processors with 32 gigs of RAM and the M1 Mac Mini that I just bought has 16 gigs of RAM. The main reason why I decided to upgrade is because when it comes to editing 4K videos on a 1440p resolution display, the 4K video editing process and workflow is very smooth. However, when I edit the same 4K video project using a 4K resolution display, sometimes the playback with the timeline, um, it can be a bit choppy. I would say it's maybe choppy 5% of the time. It's not too bad. Overall, the editing process is still quite smooth, but occasionally there will be stutter when you are playing back. So I decided to um, upgrade to the new M1 Mac Mini that is currently running this display. There is another reason why I upgrade and the other reason is because when I do live streaming with YouTube um, with this Intel version, it would be uh, really stressing out this. So the fans would rev up and the fans will become noisy and when I'm talking through this microphone, this is able to pick up the background noise from the fans. So that's the other reason why I upgraded. I wanted to see whether the M1 Mac Mini is capable of live streaming without producing too much fan noise and I'm glad to say that that M1 Mac Mini is incredibly powerful. Most of the time, it doesn't produce any fan noise at all because the fans don't even rev up. The reasons why I did not buy the M1 Mac Mini when it was first announced was because I wanted to wait for some of the graphic tablets or pen display drivers to update because um, I'm not sure whether the drivers will be compatible with the new Mac OS Big Sur and also I wanted to buy the refurbished version of the M1 Mac Mini because refurbished versions usually are 15% off official retail price. Now, just to give you the bottom line up front, if you buy the Mac Mini, the new Mac Mini at official retail price, it's worth the money. But if you buy it at the refurbished price at 15% off, it's an incredible deal. Let me talk about my setup here. So I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro on the side, which I occasionally use as an external monitor. Today it's running activity monitor because I want to show you the RAM usage later on. And this is the BenQ SW2700PT display which runs a resolution of 1440p. That's the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte of storage. This is the Cal Digit TS3 Plus, Thunderbolt 3 dock and keyboard and trackpad. I have two external USB SSD storage connected to the Mac Mini and the dock. Those are the first generation SSD drives, so the speeds are not as fast compared to whatever SSDs you can find nowadays. But the first gen SSD speeds are still fast enough to edit 4K videos, but only up to 25 or 30 FPS. By the way, if you are using recent SSDs such as the Samsung T7 or SSDs with equivalent specifications, you will be able to edit 4K videos up to 60 FPS through the USB drives either on the dock or through the Mac Mini. When I'm working, I almost always have these apps opened at the same time. So I use Affinity Photo to edit YouTube thumbnails. Most of the time, I have several files open at the same time so that I can work on them and compare the different thumbnails. This is Adobe Lightroom that I use to edit my photos for the YouTube thumbnails as well as for my blog. 
and this is Google Chrome. I have several tabs open. I also have Safari open because I have several Gmail accounts, so I need to have different browsers to open the different Gmail accounts at the same time. And both web browsers will have several tabs open at the same time. And Final Cut Pro is almost always open because I'm editing videos like almost all the time so usually while i'm doing graphic design or editing photos i will have the video export in the background now my videos are actually not that complicated i just join the clips together and just export let's take a look at the ram usage so this mac mini has 16 gigs of ram most of the time i'm using around 10 to 13 gigs of ram this is the brick down. So app memory is the memory used by the apps that are currently open, the apps that you are currently using. So I usually use around 4 to 5 gigs here. Wide memory is memory used by Mac OS and other processors. This is usually 3 to 4 gigs. Compressed memory is memory that is um, compressed, uh, memory that is used by apps that are in the background. But since they are not being used actively, the memory will be compressed. So this is how much memory there is. Technically speaking, I'm only using around eight gigs, seven to eight gigs of RAM. So I'm actually quite glad I bought the model with 16 gigs of RAM because if I were to open more apps, then um, I will use more RAM. I guess you can use my workflow as a reference. So if you are using as many apps as I do, I recommend you buy at least 16 gigs of RAM because the RAM is not user upgradable. But if you are just using maybe photo editing or graphic design app with a web browser with many tabs, you can just go with the 8 gigs of RAM. It's more than sufficient. So how powerful is the M1 Mac Mini or the M1 chip? Well, let's use video editing as an example because video editing takes up a lot of processing power. So for example, when you are exporting a 4K video project and the video file is 20 minutes long, it's probably going to take you just 10 minutes or half the time of the video to export that project. So that is actually really fast. However, compared to the Intel version, the one with Intel i7 6 core 3.2 gigahertz processor, the M1 Mac mini is just maybe 5% faster. So if you are already using the 2018 Intel i7 model, there is actually no compelling reason to upgrade because you are not going to gain like a lot of uh, processing power as mentioned earlier in the video the main reason why i upgrade is because when i edit 4k on a 4k resolution display when i play back the timeline occasionally there is stutter if you are not using a 4k display um, actually there's no reason for you to upgrade from the 2018 model the m1 mac mini just has more graphics power the other thing I noticed is when I am exporting this video in the background, I can still edit my photos very smoothly. All the updates here are almost instant. This performance is what you can expect with the Intel Mac Mini as well. So uh, nothing too special here. It's just that when it comes to editing, sorry, exporting 4K videos, it's like 5% faster. The impressive thing about this is when I am exporting photos and 4K videos at the same time, this barely heats up. With the Intel Mac Mini, this will become very hot. So I find that really impressive. And the other thing is the fans, they don't really wrap up most of the time when I am working. The fans only wrap up when I am live streaming on YouTube. And even so, the fans are spinning at really low speeds. I cannot hear the fan noise. I only know the fans are turning when I put my hand behind. So 4K video editing doesn't even push the limits of the Mac Mini. So when it comes to 2D graphic design work, that obviously is not going to be very taxing. 
The internal drive speed of the Mac Mini is really fast. You can get up to 2.8 gigs per second read speed and 3 gigs per second write speed. So that is really impressive. Um, that translates to basically the starting up time. It's really fast. When you launch apps, it's really quick. When you save like huge Photoshop files, the saving, sorry, the saving and the opening of huge files, it's really fast. Let's talk about the downside, which is the lack of ports. So they have an Ethernet port here, which is nice. This is configurable up to 10 gigabit. I use a uh, network access storage NAS, so this is essential to me. And they have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. This is quite limiting. They only have two of this here one full size HDMI version 2 and two USB Type A. The transfer speeds for all this ports are really fast. Um, the transfer speed is really limited by your external storage drive. If you want to connect this Mac Mini to two external monitors, you have to use the HDMI port and a Thunderbolt port. If you want to connect to two USB-C monitors, well, uh, it can't be done because you cannot connect the USB-C monitors to the two Thunderbolt ports. You have to use the HDMI. At least uh, this is how it is at the time of this review. Hopefully this is something that can be fixed with an OS update in the future. If you need to connect multiple devices or other stuff to your Mac Mini, the number of USB or Thunderbolt ports behind, um, that's really not enough. So you will have to buy a Thunderbolt 3 dock and you have to factor in the cost of one of this. So for example, here I have a wireless USB Logitech receiver. I'm using this instead of Bluetooth because the signal strength for this is much better compared to Bluetooth. The Bluetooth connection is good, just that this is much better. I don't get any disconnection with this. And I use a card reader, so there's a built-in card reader here. And I connect uh, a scanner, sometimes I connect my phone, sometimes I connect my graphics tablet to this as well. And this can also output video, so I can connect multiple displays to this as well. This really is an essential buy. You cannot just buy this USB-C dongles because this will not provide enough power to power your external SSDs or your external hard drives. So how much storage should you get for your Mac Mini? The base Mac Mini comes with only 256 gigs of storage. That may be enough if you are only doing graphic design or digital art. But even so, the files are going to fill up the storage quite quickly. So I highly recommend you upgrade the storage, but don't upgrade with Apple because they are charging you 200 US dollars to upgrade from 256 gigs to 512. Instead, you can spend the US 200 dollars to buy an external SSD, uh, for example, the Samsung T7. It will give you more like a lot more storage that way it's just better use for your money another storage option to consider is to use online cloud storage i personally use microsoft 360 which gives me one terabyte of online storage i did not go with the apple icloud because it's more expensive so apple they have plans for 50 and 200 gigs and next it's the two terabyte um, plan which is more expensive compared to microsoft so if you are to buy a Mac Mini with 256 gigs of storage, uh, even the iCloud plan with 200 gigs will not be able to back up your Mac completely. I use Microsoft 360 because it's more suitable for my workflow. So Microsoft 360 will actually sync to the Mac. So all your files are actually synced online as a backup. If you need access to any file, you can download any file from any computer, any web browser. If you're using Apple iCloud, they actually will just back up the whole thing. You cannot access individual files. If your Mac crashes with Microsoft 360, you can actually go down to the Apple Store, buy a new Mac, connect the power, and get back to work under an hour. With Apple iCloud, 
you will have to wait for the whole um, restore to finish before you can get your files. It is crucial that you have some form of backup and Microsoft 360 and their OneDrive plan, and I think it's a terrific value for money because they have a lot of features. And if you get the family plan, you can actually get one terabyte for one person up to six persons. So that's an even better deal. And you can also use all the Microsoft apps like Word, um, or the Office app, Excel, and stuff like that. All right, so that's it for my M1 Mac Mini review. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Bye.